Oh. Go. A local breakfast hotspot is making their way to a big historical building. Learn more coming up. And gas prices are up across the U.S., raising a whole $1.30 in the past year. More on this cause of the increase. The procedure will be that we'll use that tumbler over there and we'll, uh, we'll draw out names of uh, as many jurors are, as are necessary to get down to 12. More controversy as testimony concludes in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, why the prosecution is accusing the judge of bias. And the Queen of Pop is back with a new take on the acclaimed album Red. More on the historic release as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Maddie Haberberger. And I'm Chris Abreu. We begin tonight with some breaking news. Kent State football's defensive coordinator Tom Kaufman has been fired. That's right. Sources confirmed the firing early this afternoon. It comes as the team struggles with their defense, giving up more than 200 rushing yards in this week's loss against Central Michigan. TV2's Ryan Shanko will have more on the firing and who will replace him coming up. Switching gears over easy has been a favorite breakfast spot in Kent since 2019, and now they're finding a way to serve even more people in the Kent community. Our Kelsey Drennan is live now outside of over easy's new home. Hi, Kelsey. Go. It's a packet. Hi, guys. The Kent Staple is changing their way into a new building. Let's take a look. Downtown Kent Staple Over Easy is looking to expand upon their business. This expansion is because of how small the space is where they have the restaurant now. Me and my desk space are having some issues. There's only 13 tables and being on a wait list um, kind of holds you back. So we need to expand now that we're more popular. The restaurant has become very popular since their opening in 2019 and they're very excited to have the opportunity to expand. It's a good feeling to be popular enough to be able to grow into another bigger space and allow more people to come in and dine with us because I know a lot of people, they try to come in, but they're stuck on that wait list. Breakfast and lunch is served until 2.30, but they're hoping to add dinner to the menu once they move to the new restaurant. Being here in a bigger space, um, along with the bar as well, we're able to eventually with staffing as it would be allowed, we would add dinner and be open a little bit later. Um, being down here next to all the other restaurants too, we can um, add on to that. If the move goes well, they're hoping to have the restaurant opened and ready by the end of this year. Go. Now, if you can't survive the day without your morning coffee or an afternoon brunch, make sure to look up for when that change happens. Reporting in live downtown Kent, I'm Kelsey Drennan. Thanks so much for that report, Kelsey. Family and Community Services is raising awareness of hunger and homelessness issues in Portage County with their Cram the Crate Challenge. The initiative encouraged donors to fill crates at Kent Social Services and the Center of Hope with donations of food and hygiene items for those in need. Items they're looking for include non-perishable foods like canned goods, peanut butter, packaged pasta, and granola bars, as well as essential care items like toothpaste, shampoo, body wash, toilet paper, and feminine products. Donations are being accepted from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. from November 13th through the 19th. And the Akron Canton Food Bank reported supply issues as food prices are increasing across the state. The agency says they experienced a 10 to 15 percent increase in food prices along with rising costs for shipping. Delayed delivery times and low supply contributed to raised shipping prices since the agency must purchase products from vendors that are farther away. This comes as they wrap up their quarterly operations in Canton, providing 1.3 million meals to local charities. And gas prices across the U.S. continue to go up with an average five cent increase just these past two weeks. Ray Bukhari joins us now with more on the cause and what gas prices we can expect in the future. Hi, Ray. Tonight, gas prices are soaring with little end in sight. Americans are spending $430 million more every day on gasoline in just one year ago today. In some towns, prices are topping $5 a gallon. 
And here in Ohio, a tank will set you back almost 20 bucks more than last year. I think, uh, I mean, I, I can say that I don't have a very long drive to work. Um, I only drive about three miles each way, but uh, I'm also a motorcycle rider. I notice myself riding the bikes a little bit more, even though it's cold out, just because they're getting about 45 miles to the gallon or so. But uh, yeah, I hope it goes back down. Experts say that the increasing demand on the slow production is the main factor. Two of the factors driving uh, global touring prices up. The one, of course, is just the the surge in economic activity uh, as the vaccine vaccination uh, process is continued, and uh, the higher uh, associated demand for, for uh, petroleum is going up. Uh, OPEC uh, has not. Uh, been producing as much as its quotas would suggest, so the supply is not keeping up with the demand for petroleum. The uh, uh, OPEC raises production and, and non-OPEC producers uh, start to raise production more aggressively. This would slow down the, the price increases. Reporting for TV2, I'm Ray Bukhari. First Energy reported that more than 170 of its Portage County customers were without power this afternoon. Outages were reported in small numbers in Atwater, Aurora, Ravenna, and Streetsboro. Nearly 150 of the customers affected are located in Randolph. First Energy says power should have been restored for those affected by 6 p.m. tonight. An investigation into the cause of the outages is pending. Hello all of Portage County, Northeast Ohio. I'm Chief TV2 weather anchor Odin Amador Gorby with your cold, chilly Friday forecast. Currently in Kent right now, it is a nice 49 degrees out there. Feels like 47 out there with a dew point of 26 with north northeast winds at 13 miles per hour with a dew point of or humidity, excuse me, of 37% and visibility at 10 miles. It is definitely a chilly night out there for us folks. 49 in Kent, 52 in Cleveland, 49 in Sandusky, Mansfield at 55. It is definitely a very chilly night out there and it's going to continue to be like that as we are going to be expecting a cold front to be coming through this evening. And across our state right now, 53 in Akron, 54 in Steubenville, Columbus still at 60, Cincinnati at 60, 54 in Lima right now. Uh, as you can see, we are going back to our local radar, not our local radar, our um, temperatures again, as you can clearly see 49 in Kent, 53 in Worcester, as we can see is definitely gonna be a chilly one out there for the evening. And oh, apologize for that folks. That's all I have for now in my next update. We will be talking about potential snowflakes falling for your weekend details ahead. But for now, back to you guys at the news desk. Thank you, Odin. Amber alerts were sent out across the state earlier today to Ohioans, notifying about a missing child, now believed to be abducted. Five-year-old Anna Burke went missing from Jackson Township, last seen wearing a pink shirt and rainbow-colored pants. Her abductor is described as a 5'10 white male in their mid-30s with brown hair and hazel eyes. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact their local authorities. Teachers in Ohio may soon be allowed to carry weapons in the classroom. House Bill 99 advanced in a state House committee yesterday and could soon be moving forward for a full House vote. The bill would allow school employees to carry guns on school property only if they complete a minimum of 20 hours of firearms training. Groups like Ohio's Teachers Unions, the Fraternal Order of Police, and various gun control, gun control groups oppose the bill. But House Republicans are pushing for a vote as early as next week. Now we have all heard of WWE, but stick with us to hear more on the Cleveland Professional Organization's Smackdown with COVID-19. Once that happened, the next time I saw her, she was in the ER, unconscious on a ventilator. to nine. More on the investigation into the concert and the young woman who succumbed to her injuries in a Houston hospital Wednesday. I don't remember how it started. Go Our back and forth. It always came back. 
You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. And even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. I have a mentor, and she convinced me to continue my education. No one receives a diploma alone. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Thanks for sticking with us. Now, it's no secret that many businesses struggled during the pandemic, and this very unusual professional wrestling organization out of Cleveland is no different. TV2's own Shane Troiano has more on how they are refusing to tap out. Bumps and bruises are not something the average person wants to feel, but at Absolute Intense Wrestling, these professional wrestlers live for it. AIW is an independent wrestling promotion based out of Cleveland, Ohio. There's been a lot of Cleveland-based wrestling promotions, but really one of the only ones that has survived is AIW. But surviving the pandemic proved to be a challenge. Like most pro wrestling companies, AIW had to think on its feet. So we came up with this idea to do a direct to IDA TV show called Go For Broke. We would rent the Odeon. We were taping five episodes like per session. And those sessions had absolutely no crowd. But later on in 2021, AIW got to body slam the pandemic right in front of an audience. The last Akron show, which we just had, had 500 plus at it. The magic happens right here in between the ropes, but that extra flair is added when you have passionate fans surrounding this entire ring. Fans cheering or booing, you know, it gives you that experience that no one can ever really explain. Fans are the most important thing for wrestling. Without the fans, that adrenaline rush is not there. You could train a monkey how to do wrestling moves. Sure can, but you can't teach them how to connect in a mode with a crowd. But you can definitely get your start at learning these moves at the AIW Academy. We have world-class trainers such as Dominic Greeny, you know, Derek Dillinger. We've had some great guests come in. You know. The trainers are different varieties. Like you learn so much here and then they get you to the places where you need to be. And despite making opponents tap out, <sighs> trainees and trainers say that the environment at AIW is one of the best in the country. Our locker room is amazing. Everybody just loves and supports each other. We want everyone to succeed and we just, we want everyone to be the best they can be. You know, we'll make sure that happens. And down for the count in Cleveland. I'm Shane Triano, TV2 News. Now, I woke up this morning, saw the blue sky, thought, oh my gosh, what a beautiful day, stepped outside, <laughs> and it was freezing. And I'm scared that that is, that's gonna become a pattern. Yeah, I heard through the grapevine that we might be getting some snow this weekend, but what can you tell us about it, Evan? Well, all I can tell you folks is that, yes, we will be getting some snow this weekend, but it won't be too much of a problem. As you can clearly see tonight, you know, we are gonna be dealing with some, you know, hit or miss rain showers, but it won't be, of total washout, but it, we also will be seeing a little bit of snow. Nothing significant as we look across our area right now. Mostly it's rain showers right now, but as the temperature goes down, so will the chance of her snow, as you can clearly see in Indiana right now. And across our, 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 mid, our country right now, excuse me, and the Midwest, I guess you could say, we are dealing with a pin, pinball machine pattern of pattern of uh, weather, as you clearly can see here. We are gonna be dealing with a pre mixed precipitation all throughout tonight and then also into tomorrow it's going to kind of subside a little bit as you know it'll be a little bit warmer and not too warm so we'll have a little bit of a freezing rain mix towards saturday but it will be your sunday when we will be dealing with that rain and snow mix the most and that's when we will have the most chance for snow but like i said it's going to be really be nothing it's just going to be less than one inch most of the time it'll be rain as you can clearly see, less than one inch across our area, a little bit more towards the north. But as you can clearly can tell, it won't be that significant. Um, and your seven day outlook, as you can clearly see towards your Saturday and Sunday, we will start to see that rain snow mix towards your Monday 
it will continue like that, but then temperatures will rebound into the 50s and 60s towards your Tuesday and Wednesday with rain showers, but then towards Thursday and Friday, 46 will be your highs. And that's your freezing Friday forecast. Stay warm and enjoy that nice warm cup of hot chocolate this weekend. Boy, you will need it. Have a great weekend, everyone. From campus vaccination requirements to vaccine approvals for children. Our Anthony Furiga has the details on all that and more in your COVID-19 Health Minute. Thanks guys. There's been a lot of new COVID developments with rising cases in Ohio to at-home COVID tests being recalled for, for, for fa blah, false positives. My name is Anthony Friga and here is your COVID-19 news. Kent State University is holding a virtual town hall meeting at noon on Wednesday, November 17th. The meeting will discuss any and all questions about Kent State's COVID-19 vaccine requirement. Many university leaders will be in attendance at the meeting and all students, faculty, and staff are encouraged to attend. Forge County has announced that they will be administering COVID-19 vaccinations to children ages 5 to 11. These clinics will take place Mondays and Saturdays starting on November 15th. No appointment is needed to attend. Additionally, children can receive a vaccination during the regular children vaccine clinic every Wednesday from 8 a.m. to noon. However, you do need to make an appointment for the children vaccine clinic. For the first time in seven weeks, COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people is rising in Ohio. 5,379 new cases have been reported. This brings the total number of COVID cases close to 1.6 million, with 140 new hospitalizations and 361 new deaths. And about 56.2% of Ohio's population has gotten at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. Back in September, the United States saw an all-time high in COVID-19 hospitalizations. Recently, this number has dropped to around 47,000 people hospitalized. 11 states, however, have seen an increase in hospitalizations, specifically in states with colder weather. People who are unvaccinated are also at a much higher risk of being hospitalized with COVID-19. More than 2 million at-home COVID-19 tests are being recalled for false positives, according to the FDA. These tests come from the company Illum, and there have been a total of 35 false positive reports. Those who received a negative result from the test are not affected by this recall. The FDA is advising anyone who received a positive test with a loom should consider getting a follow-up test. If you want to learn more about the COVID-19 vaccination requirement at Kent State, you can go to the COVID-19 dashboard on Kent State's website. Reporting for TV2 News, I'm Anthony Fariga. Thanks, Anthony. President Biden has made his nomination for the next commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration. He selected Dr. Rob Califf, a longtime cardiologist who previously led the agency during the Obama administration. The nomination comes as the administration faced a fast approaching deadline to name a permanent commissioner. Biden passed over acting commissioner Dr. Janet Woodcock following criticism for her role in how the FDA approved opioids. Now the prosecution and defense have both presented their cases in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. He faces multiple charges, including first degree intentional homicide for shooting three people, two of them fatally in August of last year. The eight days of testimony in the trial included heated exchanges, tears, and more than 30 witnesses. The prosecution has expressed concern that the judge may be biased following complaints of double standards in admission of evidence and backlash for a comment that some are viewing as racially insensitive. If convicted of the most serious charge, first degree intentional homicide, Rittenhouse faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison. What happened to my blessing though? I, I want my baby back, you know? I won't be able to live without her. It's, it's like, it's impossible. You know what I'm saying? I'm empty here, my body. The death toll from rapper Travis Scott's Astro World Festival has now risen to nine. 22-year-old Barty Shahani fought for her life for nearly a week after being trampled by chaotic crowds at the concert. Doctors say the Texas A&M student had been on a ventilator following two heart attacks. She showed no sign of brain activity for several days before she passed away on Wednesday night. Officials say they're continuing to investigate the tragedy, but the process could take months. And the Britney Spears conservatorship battle is officially over. A judge ruled to terminate the conservatorship, meaning Britney Spears is in control of her own life career. 
This comes after a 10-year battle to end this conservatorship, after her father, Jamie Spears, made medical and health decisions for the singer for a total of 13 years as her conservator. Kent State football fires its defensive coordinator. How the move will affect the team this late in the season. And it feels like the perfect night to listen to Taylor Swift. More on the legendary artist's latest release, or re-release. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Kent State's most generous annual tradition, Giving Tuesday, is here. Golden Flashes are known for giving back, and this month, your generosity goes even further with matching gifts, incentives, and challenges. Join in by supporting the fun that matters most to you. At Kent State, what sets us apart is how we come together. Sports Report. Happy Friday, Portage County. I'm Ryan Shanko here with your TV2 Sports Report, and let's jump right into it. We start with, Kent, with the Kent State news mentioned earlier in the show. Sources confirmed to TV2 that Kent State defensive coordinator Tom Kaufman has been fired. Kaufman has been with the team since head coach Sean Lewis was named back in December of 2017. The firing is the result of lackluster play by the defense thus far this season, as the team ranks last in the MAC in total defense, giving up nearly 500 yards per game. Sources tell us that cornerbacks coach C.J. Cox is expected to be the interim defensive coordinator. This is still a developing story, so be sure to follow us on Twitter at TV2KSU Sports for updates once we have them. The Kent State men's basketball team tips off their season tonight at 6.30 p.m. on the road at Xavier. The Golden Flashes have won 13 straight season openers, including 10 in a row under coach Rob Senderoff. They will have a tough task tonight trying to beat the Xavier Musketeers for the first time since 1989. A player to watch for the Flashes is Sincere Carey. He was named to the preseason All-Mac second team and will be a focal point on the KSU offense. You can catch tonight's game on Fox Sports 1 at 6.30. Round 3 of the, Ohio's, of the Ohio High School football playoffs kick off tonight, and TV2 will have updates from two of tonight's premier games. The first game is the Division I regional semifinal between the one-seeded, undefeated Medina Bees and the four-seeded, eight-and-four St. Ignatius Wildcats. And the second game is the Division II regional semifinal between the Nordiana and Archbishop Hoban. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at, KSU, at TV2KSU Sports for updates on tonight's games. From high school to the NFL, let's recap what was a crazy Thursday night game between the Dolphins and the Ravens. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens were in Miami taking on Tua, an injured Tua after Jacoby Brissett also went down with an injury. We jump to the fourth quarter in this defensive battle, and it's only right that Miami defense makes the first huge play of the night as Xavier Howard takes this Sammy Watkins fumble 50 yards for a wild touchdown to put the Dolphins up 15 to three. The Ravens would respond on this Mark Andrews touchdown to cut the deficit to 15-10 late in the fourth. However, it would be this blown coverage that would decide the game as Tua finds Albert Wilson down the sideline for 64 yards, setting up a one yard QB sneak for Tua. And then Justin Coleman puts a bow on it for Miami, intercepting Lamar Jackson as the Dolphins will win 22 to 10. Thank you for spending your Friday evening with me. My name is Ryan Chago. Have a great night. All right, well, stick with us to see the re-release of Red by Taylor Swift and what we know about it. 
When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Welcome back. Taylor Swift has once again unlocked the vault. Today, the Grammy Award winning performer unveiled Red Taylor's version, a re-recording of her acclaimed 2012 album. This new album features 30 tracks with collaborations with artists like Phoebe Bridgers, Ed Sheeran and Chris Stapleton. The highly anticipated midnight release crashed streaming services like Spotify as millions of fans tried to listen to the new songs. And I can tell you that Chris and I we're definitely among that population that was pressing refresh on Spotify. It took like three minutes for it to load, but... Yeah, I mean, she announced this a long time ago, and we've, we've been, been waiting. waiting. Yeah. So this was a long time coming. And it's two hours and ten minutes worth of music, and we sat there and listened to every second of it right in a row. What, yeah. are, your, what are your top top three? Um, I really enjoyed the collaboration with Phoebe Bridgers, to be Me honest. Too. That's probably the yeah. one I've listened to the most. Nothing but new. ten minute all too well. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think my top three, I would have to say nothing new with Phoebe Bridgers because I'm also a big Phoebe Bridgers fan. The 10 minute all too well, I was nervous. It's a 10 minute long song and it's capitalizing on a song that already exists and is already a fan favorite. She made it even better. I don't know how she did it, but third favorite, I don't know. They're all amazing. <laughs> They're all great. Go give it a listen. Well, that is all we have for you. Thanks so much for spending your Friday evening with us. For updates on these stories and more, follow us on social media at Kent Wired and check out our website, kentwired.com. Be sure to tune in to back here at 9 for an all-new episode of Kent Core. I'm Chris Abreu. And I'm Maddie Haberberger. Have a great night, Portage County.